GM, GM, welcome back to Web3 Academy, your trusted source for relevant and legitimate Web3 information so you don't fall behind the internet revolution. I'm Jay Bird, joined by my co-host Kyle Reedhead, and we believe that Web3 is going to change the world. That's why we're here to guide the world's top talent down the rabbit hole as you participate, contribute, and capitalize on the opportunity. Friends, welcome to a new episode of Web3 Academy called Web3 Debates. This is a new session where Jay and I are going to chat for about 20 minutes or so on different subjects that are coming up in the Web3 world. Generally, I think Jay and I will take a different side from it. I guess it will depend on what's going on. And we're really just going to break down certain topics in the space. And the reason we want to do this is a couple. One is because we put out a survey and many of you asked for shorter content. And so we think that this is a great way to do it. Number two, in our roll-up, which is on Fridays, we talk about all the news that happens in the week and we try to get through all of it. And sometimes we want to go deeper into subjects and we can't because we want to keep those up to around an hour as well so that you're not listening for three hours about the last week's news. So what we decided is we're going to take this episode and anything that comes up that is like really being debated in the space that maybe you're all wondering about, we're going to try to get to the bottom of it and at least give our and share our opinions on it here in this episode. Something new called Web3 Debates. It might get a bit heated. You can see if you're watching YouTube right now, Jay's got some sunglasses on. That's because we're going to be throwing some real shade at each other and he's just trying to protect himself. <laughs> I don't know where this episode is going to go. We'll find out, but it's going to get a little bit crazy sometimes. We'll see. Today's episode is actually coming, stemming from a conversation that happened in our Discord and also something we wrote about in our newsletter, which is kind of around the story of Doodles no longer being an NFT project. And really, this is a big deal, I think, across all NFT projects as they start to figure out what they really are and people realize that these are actual businesses. And what we're going to discuss here is what rights do NFT holders actually have in terms of the overall business. Just to set some context of, of what the heck we're talking about here is over the last couple of years, NFT holders have gotten this expectation that because they own an NFT, they are the same as like a shareholder of a company. And thus, they've been demanding projects to give frequent updates on everything that founders are doing, right? This is what happened with Doodles, and this became a, a big deal there. And I think the thing that people need to realize, and we're going to dive more into this, but is that the NFTs are not the business. There is a business and then businesses have NFTs that may represent maybe the brand, maybe the community, maybe other things. It depends on the NFT itself. But there is a business that is usually a incorporated company, whether it be in the US or Europe or otherwise, that they're doing their own thing to build a business. And then you have these sort of NFTs, which is the community holding these things that might have different utility to them, right? And so there's this weird dynamic that these NFTs are not actually have anything to do with the business. They don't own any equity of the business itself. But they do succeed if the business succeeds in hopes, so long as they bring value to them. And so the kind of weird part of this all, just to finalize this context here, is that oftentimes people are buying these NFTs, which is then funding the actual business, okay? And so in like traditional worlds, you probably, if you were getting funding, you would take percentage of equity of a company. In the NFT world, that's not the case. It's not what's happening. And so there's this weird dynamic here of like, does the business owe something to these NFT holders? Do they really need to involve them in the business itself? Or do they are they something else? I think that's really the foundation of this conversation. We're going to try to break that down so that if you're an NFT holder of any of these projects, they're all sort of thinking this through right now. And so this will help you understand what you should do as an NFT holder. And if you're launching an NFT, how you need to treat and interact with your holders. Web3 is obviously changing the game here. And so we want to kind of dive into how it's changing it, if it is, and what that means for NFT communities in the future. So we'll dive further into that. We'll talk about the Doodle story real quick too, just to get you some more context. Before we get into any of that though, let's take a second to hear from our sponsors. The future of social media is here, and that future lives in Web3 on top of Lens Protocol. Web2 social platforms are broken and ripe for disruption. You see, the epicenter of social media is the creators, and yet they are the most neglected. Web2 platforms like Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram are all essentially robbing creators of their worth. Creators are a new type of entrepreneur, forming new types of businesses. Yet with Web2 platforms, creators don't own their content or their profiles, and that's their product and business. Instead, they are tied to the platforms they choose to create on. Well, just like how crypto is freeing us from banks, Web3 is freeing us from these centralized platforms. On Lens Protocol, creators own their content, own their profile, 
and even their social graph and followers in the form of NFTs. This allows you to move freely from one social application to another with your content, profile, and followers moving along with you. Lens Protocol enables self-sovereignty for your social graph and interoperability across the internet. At Web3 Academy, we believe this is the future of social, and that's why we partner with Lens to ensure that the path of social media is heading in the right direction. Visit lens.xyz to learn more today. Shared ownership is revolutionizing the way we think of digital ownership. Did you know that you can benefit from the utility of a Board Ape Yacht Club, CryptoPunk, or Azuki without actually spending tens of thousands of dollars to buy it? How? By buying an access key to the asset. You see, with Segment, you can now buy and hold parts of an expensive NFT and share in its ownership and utility, like airdrops or exclusive access. As an owner of a high-profile NFT, you can distribute ownership with access keys and create liquidity for yourself. It's a win win situation. Plus, the ownership and transfer of these keys are managed on chain, which ensures transparency and security. And we want the Web3 Academy community to be on the forefront of this new wave of NFT utility, which is why we partner with Segment, a non-custodial NFT platform set to launch in Q3 of this year. Segment aims to allow users to easily create access keys and share ownership of NFTs with other friends and community members. The team is going through their beta release soon and has opened up their waitlist for Web3 Academy listeners. If you want to stay on the forefront of Web3, sign up for Segment's waitlist today with the link in the show notes below. Shared ownership is a game changer and we want you to be there first. All right, welcome back. As Kyle said, today we're breaking down what are the rights for NFT holders? We're debating. Do NFT holders have rights? Should they have rights? What does that involve? And this story really started on March 15th, when Doodles announced an initiative related to their Doodles 2 wearable collection. Uh, and this is the Gold Sock Initiative. So if you collected, there's 12 different types of socks in the Doodles 2 wearable collection. If you collected all 12 socks, then Doodles said they would send you a pair of gold socks. This led to a bit of a negative reaction, to say the least, from the Doodles community. One of their members tweeting, I paid $32,000 for my Doodle. I think you guys should hook me up with some socks for free. Like, come on. And then that led to a lot of conversation in the Doodles Discord, which led Poopy, who is one of the founders of Doodles, great name, to post this in their Discord, which subsequently went viral on Twitter. He said, we're trying to go from a startup to a leading media franchise. We are no longer an NFT project. The more time, money, resources we invest in following the latest build in public trends that fuel speculation, the less we have to achieve our long-term vision. We are not going to spend any resources appeasing those with financial motivations. We never have and never will. If we are going to focus energy on any group of people, it will absolutely be our most loyal collectors. So this was taken as a screenshot, put on Twitter, and whoa, did it ever get a lot of attention and a lot of conversation of basically this line, Doodles is no longer an NFT project going viral. I was going to stop there. Let me just finish up with a little bit more that happened here. So then Poopy, who clearly gets a little bit of emotional and probably as a founder should maybe take a deep breath a little bit more and not get so emotional, but he got it. oils. This is why you had essential oils. <laughs> That's right. Kyle's burning essential oils because he knows he might go off the uh, rails on this one. Poopy continued to get into it in Discord. And if you are a founder... Do not do this. Somebody was going off on him in Discord, which don't get me wrong. If you're a founder and you have to deal with NFT holders losing it on you in completely rude and inappropriate ways, which is exactly what Poopy had to deal with, you shouldn't have to deal with that. I'm sorry you have to deal with that, but just remove yourself. Do not get into a yelling match with Holder. And he told this Holder to floor it and get the fuck out in their Discord. <laughs> and... This led to a lot of people screenshotting Poopy saying that, basically saying Poopy saying that we should all leave. And that also went viral. So then Poopy responded and said, look, Doodles isn't an NFT project. I stand by that. This is true. But what's also true is I've dedicated my career to the blockchain. I'll never abandon the pursuit of delivering the promises of this tech to the world. Doodles started as an NFT. And this is the amazing thing about building strong community 
one of the Doodles members made a meme that said, floor it and get the fuck out. And he turned them into stickers. And he said, any Doodles holders in America who message him, he will send you free stickers. And now there's photos of these stickers up all over the place, wherever there are Doodles holders. All right. Do you want me to take the first take of this? Or do you you, okay, so you take the, that's what happened. You take the first take. Okay, so anyone that's been listening to our podcast for a year, I remember being in Madeira or I don't know, it was one of the Portuguese ads last summer. And I forget what the thing is we were talking about, but this is when this whole trend started of like, you need to build in public and this and that. And I remember getting heated at the end of a podcast and it was like, look, man, this doesn't make any sense, right? The NFT holders, they don't own the business, okay? They are not equity holders of this business. And I think that most of the people who hold these things and I would say over 50% are traders or speculators. And it's probably more than 50%. So that's the first thing we understand. This is not actually a bunch of real community members. Community members help a business grow. Most of this is people asking for updates on the business because they want to know if they should sell or if they should buy more. Okay. They're doing this out of financial curiosity to make money in the short term. Now, my opinion is this. Doodles, for example, wants to become the next Disney. Okay. Do you know how fucking hard it is to become the next Disney? Do you know how goddamn hard it is to build any business ever? 99.9% .9 of all businesses fail, okay? And here's the thing. If a business fails, I don't care what your NFC does. If it has anything to do with that business, whether it has equity or not, whether it has governance or not, whether it does whatever, it has IP or not, that NFT goes to zero if that business fails, okay? I can 100% guarantee you that. Now, if the business succeeds there's a good chance that NFT probably goes up in value. Maybe not though, if they actually do nothing with the NFT, you never know, right? They can be completely different. But 100%, if it fails, your NFT goes to zero, okay? So what we need to do is empower entrepreneurs to build amazing businesses and do everything we can to help them build a business because it is so goddamn hard. And I'll tell you right now that 10,000 people who own an NFT, they're not thinking about this business. They're not thinking about doodles or whatever other thing we're talking about every single day to make a business actually succeed you need to wake up thinking about that business you need to be having lunch talking to your wife talking to whoever and you're actually like fuck i don't even know what you just said because i'm thinking about this business when you go to sleep it needs to take you five hours to fall asleep because you're worried about this business is going to go out of business or like how you can make sure that you leapfrog the next competition that is how you make a business succeed okay is the only way you make a business succeed and so if you have to spend most of your days and your hours Updating people that don't actually care about this business, they just want to sell it, you're wasting time. And if you want to give governance to these NFT holders, these people that they're part-time caring about this business, they're actually run their own companies or work for another company and probably own 50 different NFTs and want the information on all these different NFTs, they don't care. They're not actually helping you with this business for the most part. There is probably, I don't know, 5% of the holders that actually are trying to do something here, which is great, okay? But most are not. I don't think that a business, so long as they are working in their best interest to grow this business and not rug people, I don't think that they should owe anything to these NFT holders. Now, obviously, if you notice that the founder or the business itself is not including the holders in events or access, I don't know, in community things, and like doing things for the NFT holders, probably just get out. You know what I mean? Like you don't need to ask them. Just if you don't feel like you're getting what you deserve as an NFT holder, leave, sell your NFT and go to a different community. Because remember, your NFT is ownership over the community. It is not ownership over the business. Now you hope that the business and the community work well together. And like, for example, I love our community and we use our community all the time at Web3 Academy to help us create better content. We just started a new show because our community recommended that we should do shorter content and different style of content. Now, did we get, do a vote necessarily through governance? Like, no, but we definitely went to them, asked them, and like we're taking action based off of what they said. And so that's great. You should definitely use your community, involve your community in your business, but you don't owe your community anything in terms of like, here's updates on what we're going to do next. And like, we're going to execute at this time because you want us to have this done. Like, I don't think any of that should matter. And I think that's ridiculous. And I think NFT holders, need to realize who they are. And if they're a community member, just be a community member, which means support the business, but don't ruin it for the founder, which is already struggling. It's so hard to be a founder. And now you're going to make him do all this other shit and like ask for free stuff all the time. Like it's hard to make a business profitable. It has to be profitable or that business goes out of business. Like when your friends start a business, don't ask them for free shit. 
give them money, buy their product, buy their service. You know, that's how you support your friends in starting a business. And if you are a community holder, an NFT holder of a business, support the business. Don't just expect everything for free. And yeah, you maybe paid $32,000 for an NFT. That's your own fault. Doodles didn't sell it for $32,000. You bought the top in 2021. That's your fault. Take ownership of that. Sell it at a loss or get the fuck out. Just like he said, I'm on poopy. I'm on poopy's side. <laughs> I'm completely on his side. And I mean, we've been saying that NFT projects need to stop calling themselves projects for a long time now. They're businesses. And you know what? Business is fucking hard. Get in or get the hell out. You're in or you're in the way. That's my thoughts. Let's take it from two perspectives. From the creator side, as you said, and you're very well presenting the creator side, Kai, it is very hard to start a business. Running a startup, you need to be fast. You need to be agile. You do not need to be appeasing 10,000 shareholders as these NFT holders are acting like. So I heard Luca Nets, who's the owner of Pudgy Penguins now, say, I've run eight figure businesses before, and this is harder than that because I have 10,000 shareholders. And I'm also running a startup that I'm trying to get to seven, eight, nine figures, right? Yes. So that is a real issue for creators. And for the creator, as you say, Kai, this isn't an NFT project. This is a business. Do not appease to your community. At the same time, if we look at it from the perspective of a holder, and I think that this is the issue, there's two types of holders, financial gain holders who are here to speculate and here to make money. And unfortunately, that is most holders right now. That is actually a large percentage of holders right now. We've seen that with what's going on with wash trading, with all the marketplace wars. So that is somebody that just wants to make money. Screw them. Who cares? Here's the thing. There is holders who are your community members. In the case of Doodles, here's what happened as a result of everything that came out of this. Doodles dropped about 10% on their floor price. It's not a huge amount. It's considerable. It's not massive. And here's the more indicative number, the holder count. So the number of wallets that hold a doodle went from 5,400 to 5,200. It dropped 1%. So what happened was the 1% that were there, and I'm sure there's more than this that are there, but those 1% that were there for the financial speculation, they got the fuck out. They left, they floored it, and they got the fuck out. And that's a good thing. Now, here's the thing. If you are a NFT project, I do think you need to focus on your community. Community is an incredibly powerful way to build. So you need to figure out as an NFT creator, how you involve your community. There's many different ways to do this. If you look at the Board Ape Yacht Club example, they have given their community many different games to play. They've given them things to do by constantly creating and shipping things. If you look at the Pudgy Penguins example, they have created IP around their community holders. So Pudgy Penguins went to 16 of their NFTs and they said, we are going to license your NFT and we're going to turn it into a toy. And as part of this license, you're going to get money flowing back to you. Now, that's only 16 out of a, I think it's an 8,000 collection, but there's an idea, right? In Doodles, they have a treasury that is Doodles DAO that is managed by the holders. A lot of NFT projects are doing that as well. So you need to figure out the way that you interact with your community. Frank DeGods and the DeGods community, they said that they were going to build in public to the max and I don't know if they still do this, but this was last year when every day they would post what they did that day. Now that's extreme and I'm not suggesting you do that. But what I'm saying is you need to figure out what works for you as a creator in order to involve your community because you can't burn them. And don't do what Doodles did here. I agree right. that Doodles needs to act in this way that, to build a business, but I don't think you should go burn your community along with it. Definitely not. And I think where people are getting confused is this whole idea of like everything needs to be decentralized governance, right? This is what was brought up in our Discord was like, yeah, but Web3 is different, right? And we're changing the way that businesses are built. And now we have like, we want things to be decentralized. And so meaning we need governance from the whole community. I think people are getting mixed up on 
what that really means. So like you don't need decentralized governance for everything and you definitely don't want it in a startup. It's a terrible idea. There is like literally zero precedent ever that shows that you should have 10,000 people decide on something to make a business start. I don't know one business that's ever worked out that way. Do you know what I mean? Maybe there's some, I don't know, like LinksDAO or something, you know, we've talked about this, but again, those started from one couple of people that like kind of got us started. But anyway, and it's a different style of business. But ultimately, like you give governance to something when it impacts all of those people. So like, for example, Facebook is at a point where business is built on top of it. Many users rely on it for life, right? To communicate with family and friends, whatever. They should now have governance. Mark Zuckerberg should not make decisions for 3 billion people. That's insanity, right? And that's how it works right now. They should distribute governance via a token. Uniswap, for example, did the same thing. Uniswap Labs built it. They did not have a community that helped them build it. It was just Uniswap Labs. There's like a couple people at the beginning. That company built up to like, there's a hundred people working there now. And eventually they said, okay, so many people rely on this for their business. And I mean, people who are providing liquidity to Uniswap and people who use it underlying infrastructure for their business, et cetera. We need our community to now help us decide where we go next with this because people rely on it. Okay. Because it's billions of dollars that are in Uniswap. Okay. So now we distribute uni tokens and now there's governance around that. Okay. Same thing is happening with Arbitrum, right? They're launching a token, exact same idea. It's big enough. There's a bunch of businesses and DAOs that build on top of it. Same thing. It's doodles though. In these NFT projects, that's not the case. Doodles is not a successful business yet. Build something that is worth something. Hopefully they can do that, which is, again, is not hard. 99.9% .9 will fail. And if at some point they build this amazing brand with this IP and that benefits this NFT, okay, now the NFT holders, who at that point probably will be less speculative holders and more like people who want to be a part of this thing, now you give them some governance and some say in the direction of the whole entire business or the brand or the IP or whatever it is that these NFTs get. So... I just think people need to reframe what Web3 means and what governance means. Like, it's not just give it to everyone, let everyone make a decision. That's not a good idea. Here's the thing. If that was the case, let's say Doodles has a conversation with Disney about making a show together. And it's not necessarily going to happen. They don't know, but they're in conversations, right? It's very likely that they're in conversations with some big production houses right now. If you're a holder and you have governance, you're going to vote that Doodle should share that publicly because this is the type of news that is going to pump your value. But is it good long-term for Doodles to share that news publicly? Absolutely not. No way they should do that because A, it just causes speculation. It's not a set plan. And B, I'll bet you if Doodles was going to engage in some sort of agreement like that with Disney right now, it would probably mean that Disney takes everything. Like Disney would get 90% of the deal and Doodles would keep 10. So they'd be selling their shirts in order to get that. But the holders would value that because certain holders only value floor price. And that is not what you want. Coming back to what you said, Kai, it should be based upon engagement. Like governance and opportunity to participate in the community should be based upon engagement. The way your Facebook example is like, if you have multiple pages, if you're active on Facebook, then you should have more say, not just because you hold an NFT. What have you done for me? Here's the thing what people need to understand is that the reason why entrepreneurs can build successful businesses is because they have a vision, they're seeing into the future, and they block out all the noise. Businesses can make a change all the time, and there's always opportunities and things, and you need to learn how to say no or say yes to certain things, right? But what happens is, let's go back to Facebook, for example. For anyone that was around when Facebook first started, Facebook realized that they needed to launch a news feed, right? Because before that, you had to go on someone's profile to like talk to them. They are like, no, let's do a news feed. When they launched that feature, everyone lost their shit. People started creating groups saying like, end Facebook, we don't want anymore. The news feed's the worst thing in the world. And then after like 30 days, it was the greatest thing ever. And everyone used it. Now it's how we, every social media platform works. So like if they would have done governance, more than 50% of people were complaining on Facebook back then. They would have had to turn that off. Okay. So what people need to understand is like, usually most people, unless you're thinking about every day and you have the vision of where this is going in 10 years, you're probably going to make the wrong decision, which is why so many businesses fail. So you need people that have the vision that can have the conviction of that vision to say no to things. And if you just open it up to a community who's not really focused on this thing all the time, you're going to just be all over the place and where your business goes. You're going to be going down this route. In the next route and like all over and it just 
it's a mess. It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. If you're going to invest in an NFT project, just like if you're going to invest in a business, invest in the entrepreneur, invest in the person that's got the vision. You know what I mean? Like that's the way you should be thinking about NFTs. Like a lot of people invested in Moonbirds, not because of Moonbirds direction. We didn't even really know what it was, but we liked Kevin Rose, right? I don't know. I think people just need to reframe their expectations and realize like you probably don't know the best thing for every business. If you did, you'd probably be a billionaire by now and you wouldn't be playing around with monkey JPEGs. You know? Yeah, I mean, to, to give you a direct comparison, I think a really easy comparison that we've made many times is NFT holders versus VC funding, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of these NFT projects went and they sold an NFT to get their initial funding. And then they also went and got VC funding. Doodles did this, Proof did this. A lot of major projects have done this. Yuga Labs did this. Right. right. So here's the difference though. NFT holders are sitting there being like, well, I gave you funding. Why don't I have ownership? Do you know how much valuable insight VCs give to a business? A creator is not calling up their NFT holders and being like, hey, I know that you've run multiple billion dollar businesses. Can you help me figure out how to do it this time? No. If you're a creator, you're doing that with VCs. You're contacting your all your investors and they are providing immeasurable amounts of mentorship and advice and guidance and networking and relationships and connections that propel your business forward in a way that's not just about the money. So my view is if you're an NFT holder, either step on the plate and do something for your community. And if you do something for your community, then maybe you have a leg to stand on. And then maybe you can complain and yell at Poopy and tell him to fuck off or whatever, right? But if you're an NFT I'm holder, Jay's first swear word in this podcast. <laughs> who just purchased the NFT and you're upset that your floor price hasn't gone up, you have no leg to stand on, floor it, get the fuck out. I think it's just like, starts to say that the SEC kind of knows what they're talking about. Is like, we just have a bunch of invest. The, now the, everyone in Web3 is an investor. And the problem is they don't know what being an investor is, right? They think they have these rights. They don't. They have these crazy expectations. To me, it's like, if you're an NFC holder for a business like Doodles, number one, be grateful that you have an entry point into a company to have some sort of upside of the company, whether they share equity or share revenues or whatever. Some will do it, some will not. In Doodle's case, they gave you some of that funding. So when everyone paid, they gave you some treasury to help the business out, do stuff with it. One, be grateful that you have some upside, which otherwise you could not. You had to be an accredited investor in the US specifically to get any upside from Doodles or any company ever in the US, right? Now, all of a sudden you can. So that's pretty cool. So be grateful. Number two, hopefully the business is going to do things out of the ordinary to reward community holders, which most of these projects, businesses do do. You know what I mean? Like you said with Yuga and others, like they're doing things. Doodles didn't have to give some of that funding to the treasury. So now that the empty holders can like go and do something with that money, they didn't have to do that, but they did it. You should be grateful for that. There's a lot of opportunities coming. People are getting jobs now that work in that Doodles DAO. All of a sudden they can work full time doing that because there's funding there. Like Things are happening as a result of someone taking a chance on something called doodles, a business. Mm -hmm. You need to be grateful that you have these opportunities and then leave it at that. Either participate, like Jay said, and help that community grow or help that business grow or don't. Or just hold on to it because you're like, I like the founder. I think this thing will go up. Great. Just hold on to it. And that's mm -hmm. all you need to do. Or if you don't like it and you don't appreciate it and you want someone that's going to update you every day, sell it and go to D Gods or whatever it is, mm -hmm. whoever was doing that, right? Like, you have the choice to move these things around and do whatever you want, but like you need to manage your expectations and you need to start letting these things blossom into real businesses. And right now you're just getting in the way because you're probably 21 years old and in your mom's basement. And this was like your whole life savings you put into doodles. <laughs> Piss off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to take that one step further, you own the IP. It depends upon the project, yeah. but in doodles case, you own the IP. Go start your own doodles business. You know, you think you can do it better. Go take your doodle. Put it on a t-shirt, make it a toy, right? Is it CC0? No, Doodles is IP ownership for the holders. Oh, wow. So I can do that. Yes, you could do uh, that, right? Great. Yeah, yeah, right. So go do that. And you know what? You'll make some money doing your own thing. You'll learn that running a business is fucking hard. <laughs> and you'll actually support Doodles. Right. You actually might raise the floor price because a whole bunch of people buy your t-shirt and are like, shit, Doodles are cool. That's what community members 
should be doing. That's my final thought. Kai, any final thoughts? No, I don't have anything else to say. I think that was a great little, we didn't really debate because I think we ended up being on the same side there, Jay. So maybe you didn't need your sunglasses on this episode. We'll see for the next one. For those that are listening, if you enjoyed this one, please let us know in our Discord or on Twitter. And if you have other topics you want Jay and I to discuss and give opinions on, I'd love to hear what that is. We will be doing these weekly. So buckle up. These should be fun. And doodles, poopy, I support you. I'm not a holder, but maybe one day I will be. Now's the time. Floor price is low, Kai. Get in. (laughs) I don't speculate on JPEGs. It's probably a good thing. All right. Thanks so much for listening, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to Web3 Academy. We hope this helps you along your Web3 journey. If it does, please share this episode and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Nothing in this podcast was financial advice. Crypto and Web3 can be risky. You can literally lose it all. In fact, if you invest on account of what we say, you probably will lose it all. So don't do that. In all honesty, the point of this podcast is to remove the noise of markets and price and focus on utility and implementation anyway. So you should not take any of this as financial advice. Thank you, friends, and see you in the next one.